Hi Mark, and today I have something special for you again. My top 10 Danish books for 2022. On number 10 is The Butterfly House by Katrine Engberg. Jeppe Körner is investigating a spectacular murder case that is occupying the whole of Copenhagen. A body was found in the city's oldest fountain in the middle of the pedestrian zone. He can't count on the help of his colleague Annette Werner this time because she has to take care of a baby instead of the murder. Before long, Kerner stumbles upon a sinister institution for needy youth and people who have their own ideas about caring. The author Katrina Engberg made her debut in the world of Scandinavian thrillers with Crocodile Watcher with great success, also internationally. After Blood Moon, this one is the third case for Kerner and Werner. Katrina Engberg lives with her family in Copenhagen. And on ninth place is The Lobster's Shell by Caroline Albertine Mino. After the death of their parents, the three siblings of the Gable family grew apart. While single mother Sitzel works as a restorer in a Copenhagen museum, Niels makes ends meet as a post poster poster without a fixed address. Ia, the eldest of the three, has been living in San Francisco for years and tries to get in touch with her deceased mother with a seer. But then the siblings suddenly have to take a stand on each other and their past. A delightful and tender book about daring to shed old covers and allow change. And Carolina Albertine Minos Welsing Nelsa was nominated for the Nordic Council Prize. In America, one of the stories was awarded the prestigious O. Henry Prize. The Shell of the Lobster was warmly received by both the press and the book trade and uh, is being translated into several languages. The author lives with her family in Copenhagen. And on eighth place, we have The Susan Effect by Peter Hoek. They were a model Danish family, but now the police are looking for them. Laban Svensson, the composer, Susan, the experimental physicist, and their 16-year-old twins. A senior law enforcement officer proposes a deal to Susan. He will save her family if she provides him with a secret protocol of a scientific panel researching the dangers of the future. But suddenly one member of the so-called Future Commission dies after the other and in a cruel way. Susan realizes that she is dealing with a criminal network of interests in the best circles. With crazy ideas, technical know-how and her unique Susan effect, she fights for the truth to come to light. Peter Hoek, born in Copenhagen in 1957, studied acting, dance and literature. With the novel Miss Willis Feeling for Snow, which was also very successful as a film, he became internationally famous. After numerous journeys, he established a foundation for the benefit of women and children in developing countries. Peter Hoek now lives near Copenhagen. And on seventh place, we have Liberty by Jakob Ayersbull. Tropical heat and intense feelings on a journey to the end of the night. Tanzania in the 1980s. Christian is the son of Danish parents who live there in Africa and work as a development worker. Feeling increasingly alone, he eventually befriends Mark as a black boy from an even more troubled family. Things come to a head when Christian's parents' marriage falls apart and his sister dies in a car accident. He seeks comfort and support in his friendship with Marcus, but things don't go as planned here either. The white boy wants nothing more than to be black, and the black boy wants nothing more than to be white. Jakob Ayersbø grew up in Denmark and Tanzania, where his parents worked as development workers. He had his breakthrough in Denmark with his first novel Nordkraft in 2002, for which he received the Danish Book Prize. His wild, anarchistic style inspired critics and audiences alike. His great Africa trilogy, Liberty, Exile and Revolution, was the literary sensation of the year in his home country in 2009. He was posthumously awarded the Danish Radio Grand Prize for it, and the books were number one of the bestseller list for weeks. And on six, there's The Alphabet House by Jussi Adler Olsen. The scariest theater of war is this, the year 1944. Young British pilots James and Brian, inseparable childhood friends, crash over German territory. Seriously injured and under false identity, they end up in a mental hospital in the Black Forest. Their only chance to survive is to play mentally ill. The two men still don't know what that real hell awaits them there in the Alphabet House. Decades later, what seemed long gone and forgotten returns with violence and it is relentlessly claiming new victims. 
You see, Adler Olsen has been publishing novels since 1997 and the successful series about Karl Merck from Special Department Q since 2007. He's one of the most successful best-selling authors in the world. His multiple award-winning books are published in over 40 countries and have been filmed several times and will show up in this list again. On the fifth place, it's Unrest by Jesper Stein. Axel Steen, investigator in the Copenhagen Homicide Squad, is driven by an inner turmoil. The panic fear that his heart could suddenly stop beating keeps him awake night after night. From the windowsill of his old apartment he looks out over the streets of Nörebro, Copenhagen's artist, drug and red light district. When a body is found during the unrest sounding, surrounding the forced eviction and the demolition of the youth center, suspicion falls on the police forces. Because the green lungs of the quarter had been cordoned off by the security forces during the evacuation operation. Did the police just kill one of the young people from the youth center? Steen is under pressure. Soon he's not only chasing a murderer through Nörebro, which is obscured by smoke bombs, but has to fight for his own life. Apparently the case is one size too big for a homicide detective, plagued by constant fear of death. The author Jesper Stein is a journalist and worked as a crime reporter in Copenhagen. In 2008 his bestseller about Bent Isanger Nielsen, the head of Section 1, the Danish equivalent of the FBI, was published. The book explains, among other things, why Denmark has the highest murder detection rate in the world. Jesper Stein lives in Nörebro, is married and has two children. Aisha is his fourth novel about Commissioner Axel Steen. A film adaptation of the first three volumes is being planned. Jesper Steen has received numerous awards, most recently the Golden Laurel, the most important Danish literary prize. And in fourth place is the Serbian Dane by Leif Davidson. A gripping politi political thriller inspired by Salman Rushdie's visit to Copenhagen. A fatwa-stricken writer is, given, is to give a press conference in Denmark towards the end of the Balkan War. While the Serbian hitman Vuk is supposed to kill the author for the Iranian mullahs, it's up to the Danish commissioner Per Toftlund to protect her as unobtrusively as possible. Vuk and Toftlund move closer and closer together in their plans until there is little time left to prevent the murder. The author Leif Davidson was born in Otterup in 1950 and now lives in Copenhagen as a freelance writer. He previously worked as a journalist, as a correspondent in Spain and Moscow, and as a news editor for television. He has received numerous awards for his literary work. And on number three, we have Murder in the Dark by Dan Turrell. The Westerbro district of Copenhagen, with its bars, taverns and seedy establishments, is always a bit rougher and livelier than the rest of Copenhagen, but two murders in two days is still very close to the acceptable. In the course of Commissioner Ela's research, he stumbles upon a nimble, windy crime reporter for a tabloid who may know more than the police knows. Dan Turrell, often called Uncle Danny, was uh, born in 46 and died in 93, was a Danish writer and journalist. Before he was able to make a living from his books, he initially held numerous different professional activities. He became a book author and also worked as a journalist and songwriter for beat groups. He loved Copenhagen, especially the Westerbro district, and kept describing his city in all its facets. And on second place is Two Days in July by Stig Dalaga. Dalaya heißt das, glaube ich. On Two Days in July 1944, the chains of history are cast off for a moment. In the middle of the Second World War, peace in Nazi Germany suddenly seemed within reach. Klaus Schenk Graf von Stauffenberg plans an assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler. He knows he only has one chance if he wants to shoot the Führer. History shows that he will not succeed and he himself will pay for his courageous deed, like many of his accomplices and co-planners, with their lives. In this captivating novel, Stig Dalaya tells the most dramatic 48 hours of German history. Stig Dalaya is one of the best-known Danish writers. He has written numerous prose works, plays and film screenplays. After lengthy stays in Leipzig, in New York and Vienna, he now lives in Copenhagen. Two Days in July was his first book that was also published in German. In 2005, the Hans Christian Andersen novel Reise in Blau was published. And on first place, we have Disgrace by Jussi Adler Olsen. A missing person series from 1987 linked one person and their horrific fate, Nete Hermansen. 
a young woman without any chance of a self-determined life and brutally abused by her fellow human beings. She is forcibly sterilized by a fanatical doctor and banished to Sproge, the island for outcast women. But she will return and take revenge in a cruel way. Jussi Adler Olsen was born on August 2nd in 1950 under the real name Karl Waldemar Jussi Henry Adler Olsen in Copenhagen. He studied medicine, sociology, political history and film. Before he started writing in 95, he worked in a wide variety of jobs as an editor for magazines and comics, as a coordinator of the Danish peace movement, was the publishing director of the Bonnier Weekly TV Guide, and chairman of the board of various energy companies. His hobby is renovating old houses. He is married and father of one son. And that concludes my today's top 10 and I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.